okay so welcome to the uh, second uh, session of this series uh, a webinar series uh, looking at brain health you know during um, this season and uh, beyond uh, so today we thought uh, we will answer some of the questions that we had from the last session and in the last week from many of our audience and also take you through some of the common health problems uh, people face and uh, their management during this time we'll try and keep this uh, interactive as possible but uh, during the presentation we will let people text their questions and then we'll take them uh, towards the end i will let people in as they come along so you know forgive me if i'm just slightly distracted because i'm also uh, you know controlling that Uh, so this is brought by uh, cell cerebrai uh, a brain health company based in chennai india and we have affiliates uh, around the world so as i say mention this is a presentation for for all this is not aimed at any particular uh, group uh, not for healthcare professionals in particular is for general public so we're trying to keep the level at the level uh, of of lay public you know as as uh, possible and that this is just to raise awareness uh, on the common health issues during this time and if the common health problems people have been suffering with uh, you know changes in uh, in their presentation during this uh, virus season and if people are getting any new problems we will also touch upon how people can access help you know what is an emergency and what is routine and how uh, they can um, access help during this time maybe use of telehealth and technology um, you know can be explored as well so we have three uh, people on the panel so dr asgar alam who is a, a consultant psychiatrist from uh, chennai india and dr priyanka mehta from apollo hospital chennai india and me from london so these are the top 5 questions uh, we had uh, from last week um, i will open this up and maybe let uh, dr asgar and dr priyanka say a few words as well and if they want to chip in uh, you know to answer these questions before we go to the next uh, uh, phase um, so when can we go out uh, you know that's that's a difficult question to answer you know everyone wants to Uh, go out as soon as possible and uh, today i was speaking to someone from india and they were saying that uh, many of their friends feel uh, that you know one day corona will be gone and and they'll all be asked to go back to how things were uh, but going by experience from different parts of the world i think that kind of scenario is very unlikely uh, but that doesn't mean that we are going to be stuck inside forever you know we cannot sustain that um, so i think there will be a phased uh, return back to um, you know if we call it a normal life or some kind of uh, you know there <laughs> is a normal life but with a lot of precautions and a planned uh, return back to uh, life as it was you know for for example looking at how schools could be opened uh, shopping malls and transport systems can be opened so on and so forth and uh, how do we feel positive it's not easy um if we are not feeling positive probably we need to then uh, talk to others who can share their perspective and try and see uh, the best out of the situation that we have uh, what i tell people is we are all in it together uh, positive or negative we don't know it is what it is um do what you like doing best in, you know watch and read books um you know, whatever that you want to do um but we have to you know stay together and um positive to a certain extent i guess you know we have to see the best within all these things so take away for our lives with this pandemic you know there's a big philosophical question and that comes up all the time um and uh, i'm hoping that we will get somebody um else you know towards the end of this uh, series you know maybe the last week to talk in more detail from a philosophy point of view as well 
Um, uh, we will we will come to the questions uh, in a minute. I'm just getting more questions as well. Um, sleep is a huge issue. Uh, we had many people complaining of uh, sleep problems uh, when this all started. You know, I must say things have subsided a little bit, but we'll have more on this uh, next Saturday, uh, particularly looking at grief and uh, sleep issues and new emotional issues due to and the virus, how to maintain a routine. Again, um, uh, what I've been telling uh, people is you have to systematically um, go through this as you would do, you know, with anything. Say if you are, um, you know, someone who is working or even if you have children going to school, you know, there is a routine, you know, you have to catch the bus at this time. Um, this is the time for uh, assembly and these periods run this way. And that's the routine that we are used to. But now we have to create our own routine and whatever that is, you know, whatever we are used to is gone. Um, so we have to go back to the basics systematically, then build something up and incorporate new uh, routines as they, as they become available to us. And uh, this is an ever changing situation. And I hear particularly now in India, the numbers are rising. Uh, there's a lot of panic. Um, the government is doing its best. So now it's about citizens getting together and planning things. You know, uh, I think the message is very clear. We're not going back to how we lived in a day. There will be a process to go back to you know, something. We will come to that in detail in the following presentations anyway. Uh, I would like to yeah. touch on this. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, when can we go out is actually a major question that someone has asked. But mm. um, I think in a recent interview, some uh, chief of the WHO, he said that only when we have a vaccine. I think mm. that's a fair and valid point because mm. as long as we uh, have a vaccine, I don't see how we can go out uh, like how we used to before. Uh, like you rightly said, Dr. Balu rightly suggested, the only way we can go out is in a phased manner. And I think that will be decided by the health authorities and it and it's changing from region to region. Some countries are opening up, then they find that the cases rise again, they're shutting it back. I think the case happened with Iran and uh, some parts of other countries as well. So I think uh, how when can we go out is a question, it's very tricky. Rather we are going to be stuck with a question like uh, where, can, where do we go out? Because mm -hmm. even when you go out, where, some countries will open, some countries won't. And uh, take away for our lives with this pandemic, it's a very philosophical question. As you, as mm. But uh, last pandemic, we didn't learn anything. Um, mm. At least we should take something from this pandemic at least, so that we don't make the same mistakes if we are hit with another pandemic. And uh, there was prediction from various universities that uh, we might be hit with the pandemic more frequently than before because mm. of the change in the environment and climatic issues. So even that we have to be careful with. And sleep, uh, here I've got a lot of calls uh, from my patients, from my friends and colleagues, a lot of people. I have noticed a shift in the circadian rhythm. Right? Why? Because when we are at home, I mean, most of them are not exposed to sun. So that is a major risk. Uh, that is a major thing happening because when we don't have a melatonin secreted in our body, it automatically, automatically, I mean, when we don't shut down the melatonin in our body, we don't usually feel like, um, you know, going to sleep or waking up. So the sleep-wake pattern is altered big time. And uh, to make it worse, we have this something called screen. So basically, it's either sunlight or screen, and we are continuously, continuously exposed to the light. So here, it's very important to maintain the sleep hygiene, at least practice as much as possible, and try to have a wake time and a sleep time. Uh, because it's kind of worked with few people and um, medications, it's strongly we would not recommend any medications for aiding sleep at the moment. But uh, if over-the-counter drugs are available, melatonin could be a choice just to fix the sleep wake pattern, that's all. But uh, resorting to other things like alcohol or substances to aid in sleep is going to make things worse. So we have to be very careful when it comes to sleep. And routine, like uh, Dr. Bajit rightly suggested, it depends on each and every individual. So it's your choice. You fix your routine and, and it can be a temporary routine. It's not going to be a permanent routine. It's not like you're stuck in this situation forever. 
we will come out of this situation and we will be changing our routine accordingly. So until then, at least we need to have some clarity in what we want to do when we are home. I think uh, mm -hmm. that's what yeah. I feel about all this business. Yeah. And I think Dr. If Priyanka I is going to just, cover... Uh, yeah. add uh, about uh, when we can, can we go out, also how can we go out. So when you are dealing with emergencies or when you have to go out and you can't stay at home, then you go out protected. Don't have the attitude that, okay, anyway, I'm going to get infected, so let me just go. And uh, again, the question is about the mask and all of that. So I will cover that in my talk also for a minute. So how do we go out? You go out for the shortest possible time. You avoid too much of interaction. You maintain the social distancing and you go just when needed and then um, go protected. That's very important. Again, how do we feel positive? That is through the day. Takeaway, we, it's again a big question to answer. What's the takeaway for our mm. lives? It's a very deep question and a very important question. Sleep, yeah. like I agree with Dr. Daskar too. You have to, I myself am guilty of sometimes, you know, you just go on. You, you, want, you don't have that, um, you know, you, have, you don't have the pattern to sleep because you can wake up anytime the next day morning. It's not that you have to rush. So that is something discipline. We have to bring it back because this is going to last for some time. Mm. Yeah, no, thank you. So I will move on to the next uh, slide, you know, minding our times as well, but I'll just uh, quickly go through them, maybe 10, 15 minutes each. And then we've got some very interesting questions that are coming through privately as well. I will share them uh, here, here. Yeah, thank you. So I thought, you know, I'll, I'll just, just touch upon a few common uh, scenarios that, you know, I get called about for five minutes, literally five minutes, and then we'll get uh, Dr. Asgar and Priyanka to say as well. Uh, so, um, you know, ADHD is something, uh, you know, I commonly see, but I, I thought it, it'll be very interesting to touch upon this briefly, uh, because, you know, it's not a very well uh, recognized condition, uh, but uh, many people do suffer from this. Um, I don't know about the diagnosis rates in India, but even here, it's not a very well recognized condition. And people are generally, you know, hyperactive and, you know, they have difficulty in focusing. And particularly with the restriction, they feel even more uh, difficult to express themselves. You know, so it kind of comes out in so many different forms. And you know, anxiety is one uh, aspect of it, you know, o o OCD, depression, uh, you know, all sorts of interesting uh, in a presentation, you know. Uh, and, uh, you know, people who are an anxious, people who have eating problems, addictions, you know, we've seen... Uh, this being manifested in so many different ways. You know, I was looking at uh, India, uh, where when there was um, an opening of these liquor shops, you know, there was a mad rush uh, of people going to that. You know, they're trying to, you know, trying to address some of their addiction issues probably. And there is also uh, this idea that you know they're they're fearing that they're missing out on something and they should be queuing up. Um, you know, not even regarding uh, the safety uh, of themselves and others. And uh, coming to um, common uh, medications, the number of people take uh, medications, you know, antidepressants, antipsychotics, uh, sleeping pills, you know, for their um, emotional problems, mental health conditions. Um, they may see that there is a slight change in their behavior and there could be a tendency to either stop or increase their dose. You know, our advice is, you know, don't do that on your own. Treat this as any other time. Um, uh, visiting your doctor might be a problem. I mean, this is where yeah, the telehealth option comes in. You know, we will be putting up a bit more information on how to access uh, certain portals and uh, there are doctors who are available to advise and pharmacies are willing to um, dispense and even ship it to your address. So that's available. So don't do anything different during this season is what I would say. Don't just pop in a few pills if you're not able to sleep. You know, it can lead to respiratory depression. You know, one needs to be aware of that. Uh, and we know that the virus also affects your respiratory system. Uh, very important. And uh, uh, as I mentioned briefly, there will be a tendency to smoke excessively or you know, drink or do even drugs. You know, uh, I know a lot of people uh, do these things, but they are not uh, healthy that we all know, but it also creates a situation which puts the health system 
uh, further at risk. You know, we have had situations where people have been involved in, you know, drunk driving and accidents. And uh, so this is a huge risk, you know, don't increase your risk, you know, during this COVID uh, season is what I'd say. Uh, Dr. Priyanka will touch upon women's health, but I also thought it will be uh, useful to touch upon some of the common uh, issues that, you know, women uh, face. You know, we have different groups of people, children, you know, men and women and seniors. I'm sure we'll be covering all of that, but I thought it's important to um, point out certain physiological issues you know phys what i mean by physiological is normal things that happen you know people will come to age you know people will get pregnant in fact you know there are the, from what we heard from dr priyanka last week there could be unplanned pregnancies uh, you know, cancers don't wait for anyone. You know, people do uh, have um, those issues such such as that. You know, they cannot sleep, sexual dysfunction, in you know, a menopause. You know, life goes on. You know, COVID or not, uh, are they urgent? You know, can they wait? Uh, but these issues cause a great deal of distress. You know, although the health system might say that they are not urgent, they are not emergency like a heart attack or an accident or stroke. But this do, these things do cause a great deal of distress, you know, and when you are in a closed environment, uh, you know, this does cause a lot of emotional problems. We will briefly touch upon that. And then we have uh, our senior citizens uh, with chronic health problems. Uh, and we also know that some of these chronic health uh, problems can be exacerbated, you know, can become worse under stress, you know, when they feel trapped when they don't have access to their regular routines, you know, walking, for example, you know, chatting to their friends or even, you know, visiting their doctor and having a little checkup. So all of these things can get worse. Uh, one thing I always wanted to mention, and uh, I will say again, I tell this to people is, it's very important to, um, you know, maintain sleep, but also good bowel habits. You know, the lack of routine would mean that people will eat at whatever time, they might eat the wrong type of food, they might not drink enough. But all of these things, you know, I, I spoke to a urologist, you know, who was talking about a lot of issues that he's seeing. Gastroenterologists are, you know, seeing some interesting issues, you know, gastric problems, you know, bowel issues, and all of that is very important. And uh, also it's very important to recognize, you know, some of the, our senior uh, citizens with memory problems can develop more behavioral uh, changes as well. You know, it's very important to be sympathetic to them. Uh, you know, it's a very challenging time. So I'll uh, pass it on to Dr. Asgar uh, to particularly focus on the emotional uh, challenges you know, among the high risk groups that I just mentioned. Yeah, sir. Um, uh, thank yeah. you so much for that. Yeah. I think we'll just move on. Um, I just wanted to focus on few challenges faced by uh, some amounts of uh, risk groups that we have today. And what are the emotional challenges that we all are facing in unison? It's basically the fear of uncertainty. Um, there is also this fear of financial crisis. There's worry about family well-being. There's someone who's going to contract a disease. What's going to happen once they do, and will they be able to come out or not? All that, um, all that things you know, just keep worrying about. And um, there is then there is feeling of sadness and dullness and feeling of emptiness. You know, it's more like feeling low throughout the day and not knowing what to do, where we're going to do, where we're going to go, what we are going to do. You know, all that. It is uh, um, am I audible to everyone? I just got a message I'm not audible. Am I audible? Can you hear me? Ah, uh, yes, yes. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, thank you. I'm sorry for the interruption. So yeah, uh, the sadness, the feeling of emptiness, and there's this excessive fear of contracting the virus. And the majorly, if you uh, take all this, it's more like a feeling of oblivion. Like we fall into a hole where we don't see a light at the end of it. And uh, nobody knows when things are going to get normal. Nobody knows when things are uh, going to be available like it was before. And this feeling, you know, this, this chronic state, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of making things more worse in terms of, uh, in terms of individuals in uh, risk groups. Now, I wanted to first focus something about children because a lot of people are struggling. I get a lot of uh, calls and 
and consultation for children. And uh, yeah, thank you. So what is the problem with children that's happening? Because the schools are shut and children cannot go out to play because the playgrounds are shut and they cannot go out and meet their friends because of social distancing and uh, lockdown. So what will the children do at home? What they basically do at home, I think you all would have come across, many of you would have come across, is they are basically stuck to a screen. It's either a TV or a mobile phone or a laptop or a tablet or whatever. And now this is becoming a cause of concern among many parents because uh, the more they are used to the screen, the more it's likely that the behavior will be altered during this uh, process, during this COVID-19 crisis. Now we have to be very careful in how to deal with children. We cannot deal like adults because the way they take in the information is different from how adults take in the information, right? So we have to put the children in a very basic, in a simple way. Communication is what I would recommend is a key. Now, communication has to be both ways. It doesn't necessarily mean that you just speak and let, uh, and you want the child to listen. Only when you listen to the child, you know, the child will have a lot of questions. Even they feel anxious, afraid about the situation, why they cannot go out, why should they wash hair and wash them? Why can't they meet their friends? All these questions that creeps up in the child's mind should be clarified immediately uh, by the parents. So it's very important that you give them information that is enough. Don't try to overboard them with the other information that you have. I mean, you of course may be knowing a lot more, but for a child, how much should they know? And based on their questions, you can alter. Now, also it's very important to establish a routine with the child because now when the child goes to school or another also goes to college, so there's a routine that they want to wake up, they go to school, there's this uh, routine in the school, they come back and then they have a routine. Now all that is lost. So instead of letting child run its own routine, it's better we fix some amount of routine and we manage our routine along with the child. It's not like you tell the child to do this and do that. It's important that you do things along with the child so the child learns more things. So give them some power to ask questions and teach them some things like household chores, Helping, helping you and helping others. You know, this also kind of builds their um, social skills. So it's very important to look after these small, small things, which can be actually uh, a major um, concern uh, in the future. Now, it's also important to be very consistent with the time. Uh, so here, when I say fix routine, you also make sure that you adapt your routine according to the child's needs. So you make sure even though you might be working, it doesn't necessarily mean that you convert your whole house into a workspace and continuously show up from day to night, not doing what is required of you and not listening to the child. So you lend yourself to the child for a moment, say like an hour or two, spend with them, to see what they need and do some activities together. Keep them busy, play with some board games, some, some puzzles or anything, you know, no physical games. What this will do is this will also keep them away from the screens. This is very important. Building social skills is very important. Now the next slide. Please. Now the other risk uh, group that I would like to uh, cover is the elderly individual, the seniors. Uh, now they're being told by everybody in the entire world, you log into any websites, first problem that drops in is it's the elderly people who's at risk. If you are old, do this, do that. You know that, now imagine if someone is telling you on your face when you switch on the TV and when you switch on your mobile phone that you are the person who's at the risk. Now what will happen? So this is kind of triggering a lot of panic attacks, anxiety attacks, and, the, and this even makes more, uh, more agoraphobic, you know, fear of going outside, fear of environment. Now they are so afraid to talk, even afraid to ask for help. Now who do they go and ask for help? Young people are afraid to interact with uh, old people. When we say social distancing, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to separate yourself completely. It's only physical distance, not mentally distance, psychological distance. We need help more than anybody else. So if you know, or if you have uh, anyone who's old and who's far away from you, reach out to them, have a FaceTime, have a face call with them. You know, uh, reassure them because this is what we need right now. They are so scared and they are so confined to their space uh, the escape seems really, uh, uh, what do I say? The escape seems impossible for them. And this kind of leads to feeling of impending doom, apprehension, abandonment, and, uh, and the strict quarantine and the fear that they might attract them, someone from outside. So all these things are kind of making things uh, really, situations may, 
making the situation really grim. Uh, the next slide. Yeah, the next slide. Yeah, and there's also comorbid conditions that I would like to, because uh, it has been said in many papers and articles that those people with comorbid conditions are at higher risk than those of the general population. So it can be any age group, age group which has a cardiovascular disease, a lung disease, like a respiratory illness, like an asthma, diabetes, hypertension. Now, these are the people who need to be extra cautious. It doesn't necessarily mean that you should be confined and be afraid and, you know, um, don't do this, don't do that. Here, it's very important you maintain those comorbid conditions. If you have a diabetes, you maintain your sugar. If you have a hypertension, maintain your blood pressure. So if you do that, and if you continue with your medications rather than stopping and experimenting, because this is not the time to stop and experiment. This is the time to be more careful. So it is very important that you take your medicines routinely and you manage your comorbid conditions as per what, how you were managing before. There's nothing new, new you need to do. You just have to stick to the routine, that's all. And what is the worst thing that happens is stress, anxiety, depression. These, uh, I think in the previous webinar we had about this uh, neuroendocrinology where Dr. Bala was discussing how stress weakens our immunity. So those with comorbid conditions, weakening our immunity, it's, it's, it's like uh, opening the door of the fortress uh, for the invaders. So it's really bad. So you have to make sure that all these are under control along with your mental health. So the next slide. Next slide, can I have this? Yeah, uh, so I was just uh, telling you about uh, the various risk groups. And if you have any questions about particular individuals, because there are so many things that people have, and if you have any questions, any doubts, do reach out to us. And we are trying to come up with uh, various routines, various treatment uh, protocols and strategies. So we'll try to blend in. And if there is anything else we can do, we'll be glad. And uh, I'd like to hand over to um, over to Dr. Bharat. Yeah, good, uh, good day, good evening to all. So without uh, spending too much time, um, women and lockdowns. Women form almost 50% of the population and how do we then take it from there? And because um, like I said last time also, for many women, it is not just, uh, you know, they're uh, working from home, they're working at home also. And it is inevitable that they will get overwhelmed because uh, at one point of time, you were just having a set routine where you're doing this much work at home and you're going out doing your work there. And there was a freedom to move around and you could have balanced. But now uh, there is so much of restriction. If you talk about a woman who's working, again, there's restriction. And then if you're somebody who's staying at home also. So the work list, the to-do list for women is not ending at all. Women, as we see the age group from adolescents, young teenage girls, Women in their 20s, 30s, and 40s. Similarly, women uh, nearing menopause, postmenopause. So it's not that the only emergencies women have are labor, and the only emergencies they are uh, some kind of uh, obstetric or a pregnancy related emergency. Emergencies can happen at all ages of life for women. It could be a 10 year old, like Dr. Babu said, who has attained menarche, is having heavy bleeding, you know, then you're again restricted next as to, you know, uh, how they can be taken to the hospital. Could be someone in their uh, 20s, they are having a gynec problem like an ovarian cyst and they need a surgery immediately or they have severe pain and then they're not able to, you know, reach out to the hospital because the initial few weeks of lockdown, can I have the next slide, please? The initial uh, few weeks of lockdown, uh, it was that uh, we were all told to stay at home. Now, when we are opening up also, there's a fear. If I go to the hospital, am I going to contract any illness or any disease? And then you have problems like Dr. Balu also said, you have problem like uterine cancer. So is if there is somebody who is, say, in their uh, late 30s or 40s or 50s who is having 
an abnormal bleeding and they are you know sometimes our people are just taking self medication because either there is a lack of access to the doctors because uh, all the gynecologists for now are busy with either the obstetric care and sometimes there is non availability sometimes there is miscommunication sometimes the clinics the neighborhood clinics which women used to have access and they used to go so easily now they're all closed so it's not possible to just walk into any kind of uh, clinic and get the doctor seen but sometimes you just have to it's uh, difficult to uh, go there and even the hospitals are uh, kind of uh, you know they are uh, seeing the women only in the emergencies and then you have the doctors going to be wearing the ppe kit and the mask and sometimes it's very daunting and women feel okay for something very small heavy bleeding is happening let me just uh, stay at home and take care and they will just try their own medicines or get something over the counter you could be missing out of something like uterine cancer which can hit even as early as 30 or 35 years so we have to be careful that uh, we are not missing out on very serious issues in this pandemic next please also next then you have something called ovarian cancer so how many of us know that uh, yesterday was uh, world ovarian cancer awareness day there were posts and there were um, social media were, were uh, telling us all kind of information about it but then this is again a very common problem which women sometimes have no idea that there is an ovarian cancer lurking if they have all these symptoms so if you know someone who's been having constant fatigue changes in their bowel habits or there is um, loss of weight and loss of appetite or abdominal sweat at that point of time they do need to uh, reach out to their uh, either to their family doctor or you need to find out where the doctors are available the doctors are available for uh, non emergency where you don't need to immediately rush to the hospital there are a lot of online portals on which the uh, doctors are available for a video or an audio consult and then it is important that we don't miss out on problems i'm really uh, worried now about all these important uh, issues which because uh, many of these issues we would pick up on either a master health checkup or a routine health checkup or someone would come with an abdominal pain or a nausea or a vomiting and then you send them for an ultrasound and then we pick up but now at every step there's a hurdle first hurdle is coming out of your house going and meeting your uh, gynecologist there again you are going to be seen very fast rushed and then you are going to be ultrasound at each point of time even the patients the people are worried you know i go to the ultrasound if it is crowded what if i get the infection there so they would either want to postpone it or the availability of ultrasound itself is going to be less you are not going to be getting that many places opened where ultrasound is being done next and uh, next slide please uh again there are so many issues like uh, we think okay women uh, the the uh, labor rooms are open and they are functioning so then that's it women are taken care of it's a like huge we are worried so much about i absolutely respect that migrant workers who are having so many issues and so many other social problems which are coming up because of pandemic but women who form 50% and more of our population there is a whole list of problems that they are facing and they are not even able to come to the hospital it could be something as simple as leukorrhea so anyone who is going to call up for a white discharge or leukorrhea we just going to tell them okay it's not an emergency but for the the person who is suffering from it she could be having a severe bulbo vaginal infection which is troubling not making her sleep the whole night it could be something like an osteoporosis leading on to severe back pain not able to do any work could be a polycystic ovary pcos where they have irregular period not getting the period and then giving very heavy bleeding and period and they have flooding and then you know and then there is no access or it could just be something like a menopause with all its mood swings hot flushes only the woman who is going through all these problems infertility again but on this aspect we are hearing some good news because all the patients with the unexpected infertility many of them are even now where it was stress related so they are conceiving on their own also so that's a a kind of a, a silver lining to this very dark cloud and pms again i mean all the men would i guess know when their partners are having the pms again it can be a very very stressful situation where it could lead on to anger spells it could lead to guilt it could lead to so much of discord in the family next so 
let us just all women, all men, everyone around, let us now learn to accept what is a new normal. There is no running away from the new normal. If we are still trying to fool ourselves that we're going to get back to how we were and things will settle down, H1N1 settled down. We had a question also in the chat box about H1N1 or SARS and the other. Uh, all these other uh, epidemics were not pandemic and this is again a new virus. We are having all guidelines, documents, which we are reading are all living documents because no one is clear in spite of so much of research happening, all the minds and brains of the world working together. Still, we are not sure about the vaccine. I don't want to sound too pessimistic, but we are hearing that there are almost 10 to 15 strains of this virus. So even if there is a vaccine, whenever it is, I can imagine the mad rush for the vaccine. I can also imagine if you give the vaccine and it is not covering all the strains, still you are susceptible to get an infection. So we just can't take that lightly. Next, please. So probably this is going to be the new normal in different kind of masks and we just have to be protecting ourselves. And are we going to be, you know, always be in that fear? Next. So probably this is going to be the new normal. I would just uh, tell that um, previous slide, please. I would just put one point that uh, there is no need for us to wear the surgical masks if you're just going out for uh, the three ply masks and the N95 masks are needed when you actually go either to a hospital and you are like a healthcare worker who would probably be exposed. If you're just going to the hospital for a visit or you're just going for your getting your grocery, you don't have to wear the, you can just wear a good cloth mask which is covering the entire face. The purpose of the mask is not only preventing you to get infection, but also you don't touch your face and then you are touching all over with your hands and then you're going to touch your face and your mouth and that is going to increase your risk of infection. So any cloth mask covering your entire face would do. Next. Next please, yeah. So again, visiting the hospital, the tips would be that uh, previous, uh, you uh, probably need to choose the uh, hospital uh, now, very few hospitals are functioning, the big ones are functioning. The smaller clinics are just again opening up and they also are having a policy of staggered appointment timings so that you're not crowding. Only one attender is allowed into the hospital. Both the people who are going up to are screened for fever at the entrance and for any symptoms and also social distance is maintained and also make sure that you are when you are in the hospital, again, don't touch your mouth, your nose, don't remove your mask to talk, wear your mask and talk because we are not used to it. Next slide. So it would take some time for us to get used to that. So that is the reason why if you keep wearing the mask when you go out, every time you get used to that and that would be a good idea. There is some talk again about if you keep wearing the mask, is that you're breathing uh, out the air which is rich in carbon dioxide. So is that going to, you know, cause any kind of toxicity? So if you're going to be wearing a mask even for four to five hours, the amount of carbon dioxide is coming out is not going to cause toxicity. So it is safer to wear a mask at this point of time rather than not wear it. Next. And uh, I can talk about India. We have a lot of uh, private labs uh, doing the test previous. Uh, so these are the private labs where the tests are. Uh, can I have the previous slide please? So the tests are being done with the doctor's prescription. And when you go to the hospital, don't be afraid. Your doctors are on the left uh, picture is how the doctors are going to be when they probably you won't even know who is who because they are not going to be removing their mask to say hi to you. They you may find that they are very impersonal. But that is the new normal for some time to be. In, um, in India, these are the, in Chennai, these are the different labs where you can get an appointment and with the doctor's prescription, the test is done in case you have symptoms. Next. And also to reach out to doctors, there are different portals available, online consultation can be done. So you don't have to suffer just thinking that, okay, I, uh, there is no doctor available anywhere. The online consultation and online uh, telemedicine is going to be the future. And then you can at least get for simple and common ailments where you don't need uh, a detailed examination to be done. Treatment is offered. Next. So do reach out. And uh, make sure that you take care of yourself. You have to learn, adapt, and move on. Next.
Yeah, I think that is the last yeah. slide. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that's the last slide. Yeah. So lovely. Thank you. So I'll pick up on you know one of the questions. I think that was asked. I think Asker also um, you know replied to that. There are a few questions, but I'll pick up on you know one of the very interesting questions. I think uh, um, was asked in the private chat and has come on the everyone to everyone as well. How come H one N one and SARS faded after a few months? You know, actually, it is an interesting question. Uh, you know, they are kind of very different to uh, what we're seeing now with uh, COVID nineteen. They didn't fade off, uh, you know, after a few months. You know, it's been they, they've been around for a while. It is. Just just that it didn't affect uh, a lot of people. So, you know, giving you uh, an analogy from say another disaster, say for instance, if you looked at say tsunami or earthquake, um, you know, they affected certain parts of the world and caused extreme devastation to those areas. But the other areas of the world were relatively unaffected, you know, so people went about their business and sending, you know, aid and the money and other things. With this, it's different because it started uh, obviously in China, but then uh, one of the major differences we saw was uh, although this uh, virus wasn't as deadly as the ones that you've mentioned, uh, it spread faster. And also, it um, the, the people who are infected by it were relatively well for a few days, at least five to seven days before they got symptoms and many of uh, the people who were infected were asymptomatic which means uh, you know it was very difficult to detect and also these people were fit enough to move around when you looked at some of the other viruses you know the 1918 uh, pandemic was it was really severe you know it went all over the place and what is even more interesting when you look at that is in those days uh, they didn't have uh, extensive transport networks like we have now in spite of that it spread uh, you know extensively so these things are very deadly and uh, you know it can spread but now with planes and ships and you know trains you know this can spread even much faster and people living in uh, sort of crowded areas uh, and uh, most of these viruses uh, had some form of treatment or a vaccine was uh, uh, discovered before they went away and they were contained you know, Ebola was another, uh, you know, kind of pandemic to a certain extent. I guess it didn't affect a lot of people, but then uh, it was more deadly. You know, it, it, I think uh, if I remember right, it killed up to 50% of people uh, it affected, uh, but it was uh, transmitted through uh, body fluids and uh, people were very sick by the time they got um, the, the virus and they were not moving around spreading it. Uh, so this is very different. Uh, to you know the previous ones, I don't know, yeah, Asghar, if you wanted to add anything to that. Um, yeah, uh, what he asked the question was very interesting because the H one N one was an influenza virus which affected around uh, I think hundred uh, fifty million people died, if I can recount. And in those days, they didn't have the strain naming. Later, they found that it was an H one N one strain, and uh, it lasted for around two years. And uh, apparently, it was transported via ships because most of the countries were connected by ships. And so um, the SARS virus, virus it's a coronavirus as such. What we have today is SARS-CoV-2. It's a different strain of SARS virus. We classified as SARS-CoV-2. Uh, now, like, now, like Dr. Balu discussed, the problem with SARS-CoV-2, which is uh, COVID-19, is uh, the incubation period and the, uh, and the milder symptoms that it presents, because a lot of people are asymptomatic, making it really hard to difficult. And compared to 2003, what we had SARS outbreak, 2020, I think we are very well connected. And a lot of people are doing a lot of holidays, people are traveling. And that wasn't the case maybe 17 years ago. That is also another big reason, is what I feel. But uh, like Dr. Balu said, SARS was more dangerous, but it was more restrictive to the healthcare system. It, it didn't spread so easily. And uh, whereas with coronavirus, the problem is it spreads really fast in contact, uh, air drop, that, you know, these things make it worse. So we have to be very careful with coronavirus. And we don't know how long this is going to stay because H1N1 stayed for almost two years and SARS stayed for a few months. But nobody can actually tell how long the COVID-19 is going to stay. So we have to uh, be very careful for next at least a year or so. 
Indeed, yeah. So we are about uh, 45 minutes into this. We've got more questions. Um, what I can do is uh, condense them for uh, next week. Um, but let people... Um... One more question I have got privately. So I will yeah. just... Uh, are men more affected with uh, COVID than women? So this again uh, was a kind of... Uh, are women protected because of the estrogen? So, what is your take on that? Again, you know, it, it's uh, very hard to say, you know, is it just because of uh, the makeup or um, it's also because, you know, they go out more and they get uh, infected and women are relatively protected. Um, when this came out, I remember reading somewhere that uh, estrogen can be protective. And in fact, uh, even pregnancy can be protective. And I, I know now, uh, people are saying for slightly different things. Um, uh, it, it is very hard to say. There are multiple uh, reasons, I guess. It could be uh, Pregnancy all of that. Uh, is an immunosuppressive state, but uh, we have seen with H1N1 that uh, in pregnancy, sometimes the virus, the whole problem of, see, when you're worried about the infection, you're worried about getting the severe kind of infection because... We are not talking about 80% of people who catch the infection and they recover with very mild illness. Around 10% uh, or to 15% are getting uh, uh, moderate illness. It's only the 5% who need ICU and in that the mortality rate is around 1%. So the mortality is high where you're having either uh, immunocompromised like transplant recipients, somebody with hypertension, cardiac disease, diabetes, asthma, more than 60. Even age when we say uh, being uh, 30 or 40 doesn't mean that you will not have, get the infection, number one, or not get a severe form of infection. Especially in New York, they have seen uh, people with young people coming in with stroke and a lot of embolic phenomena where the blood starts to clot. And similarly in pregnant women also, we are finding that this is something called thrombosis, where you're forming these small, small blood clots all across your body. And when that starts happening, then there is a problem called pulmonary embolism, which means that your lung circulation gets blocked and then that can uh, cause a sudden death. So these are the reasons uh, which by which we cannot just extrapolate and say that okay pregnancy is protective or women are protected. So the bottom line stays like Dr. Asghar had said in the last webinar is the the, uh, the treatment the answer is very simple wash your hands don't touch your face wash your hands and don't touch your face social distance. But still the numbers are increasing every day starting March uh, 1st or 2nd there were only around uh, less than 40 cases in India and we were all thinking, okay, this is something which is so far away. When we started our lockdown in the end of March, we were still, you know, kind of feeling very happy, in fact, in a very sadistic way that, okay, our numbers are less and we are locked down and we are all clapping hands and we were lighting candles and we were rejoicing that our numbers are so less and, we, you know, it's like a big tree. And then when our second lockdown started, we were like, okay, 15 days more of holiday, right? And now as the numbers are increasing in an exponential manner, and now we are kind of, you know, worried. And now we are feeling happy, okay, probably our mortality rate is less. So we just can't say this is a new virus. And we just have to be sure that just being a woman may not protect you, being pregnant may not protect you. So you just have to follow the principles, which we have been telling again and again. And also... Make sure that your routine and the other things and immunity boosters, that is there because it does get overwhelming at one point of time when you're sitting cooped up in your house also, it does not go, when you have to go out, that fear is there. As healthcare professionals, we have the fear that, okay, if I contract the illness and then a whole trajectory of emotions go around you. If I get the infection, then I'm going to bring it back. I'm going to give it to my family. If I get infected or exposed to someone who's infected, I have to go to quarantine 15 days. I can't come home. So there's, it's, it's just like a chain reaction. And I really have no answer as to when this will end. Uh, I'd like to just add on before completing. No one is protected. It's, you're either at low risk or high risk. High risk. It doesn't mean that you are protected just because you're young and, and you know, you're pregnant. In fact, pregnancy, the rates of infection are equal to the general population is what the WHO website states. And even the CDC says. The only reason they're putting vulnerable groups is they don't know the Im impact it can have on the fetuses or the, or the infants after they are born. So that is, I think, uh, that will take a long time for the study to be published. So 
uh, it's just I would just like to end up by saying, uh, don't think that just because someone near you doesn't have and you don't have in your area, you are safe. So everybody's at risk. It's just that the level of risks varies from individual. To and also something called viral load is important. When you get the infection without wearing any PPE, it's like the number of viruses going inside you. So you're not wearing a personal protective infection. You've got in contact with somebody for a very long time. The number of virus you have inhaled and viral load is more. You are wearing the uh, at least your mask if you are going out. You just had a very brief encounter with someone who's infected. You would probably get a mild illness. Probably many of us are also infected at this point of time. We will know slowly when the antibody tests become freely available. And even with the antibody tests, there's a lot of questions. So uh, that's a total uh, different topic uh, on its own. Yeah, yeah. No, I think uh, that's uh, that's very useful. You know, that's a good sum up. Uh, I will finish this in about one or two minutes because I've just got a poll going. Uh, but to summarize, uh, I, I would say, you know, like we all uh, discussed, uh, this is going to affect everyone, uh, children, women, men, uh, seniors. In terms of um, severity, probably there are certain modifiable risk factors in these populations which make them uh, you know, respond to the complications of the virus infection in different ways. Um, you know, we have in, in the UK, um, people in their 90s uh, recovering very well and, uh, you know, teenagers or women, you know, succumbing to the infection. So it is very difficult to say. There is also another um, view that some of these people who have survived uh, previous you know, pandemics or infections are probably more equipped to deal with it. Again, these are all views and perspectives. Um, and I like Dr. Asker. Hi, Abhi Arya here. You My... know, so, hello? Yeah. yeah. Hello? Yeah, I think there was a, yeah there was a, someone asking a question. You know, we are, please, uh, please type it in and we will let you have uh, some time to ask questions as well. Um, so uh, what what I was saying was, um, it, you know, it's difficult to uh, say this group will be protected and I will get it, I will not get it. One of the big concerns uh, governments around the world uh, had uh, was that many people will get complications and they will all be rushing to uh, intensive care. And hence there was a huge uh, panic and the necessity for lockdown. Um, so it was more about protecting the health systems from not being able to cope with the number of people who might present with complications, you know, if they all presented at the same time. Thankfully, with uh, the interventions most government has uh, taken, that hasn't happened. The, the health systems around the world have been coping to a certain extent, and there are also excess uh, capacity being created uh, in converting, you know, stadiums, you know, convention centers, schools into facilities where people can be treated. So that's, uh, you know, to a certain extent uh, positive. But we are far uh, from getting back to, you know, if there would be a normal, um, and uh, we have to, you know, stay cautious. Um, we can take all the precautions you know, improve our general health, stay connected, um, and we can then uh, hopefully get out of this without much damage to the human race. You know, that's what we're trying to achieve. Um, so if there are no final points, I'll just close this. And we've got a few more questions, which we will then answer as a part of uh, the next uh, session. And thank you all uh, for participating. So I'll just uh, stop share, or uh, first I need to uh, stop share and then uh, exit. Thank you all for joining. <laughs>